welcome to the channel. This is an area of uh, land we have to work today. So I had a bad feeling about coming here this morning. I often have a bad feeling about coming here because uh, it's a difficult place to get to and um, it's a difficult place to run around because I've been cutting on the other side of the valley. I haven't run in any of the trails since the last lot of snow. And that means the snow is very soft and very difficult to not only travel across. So I've tried to put my staging area back. We'll get down there in a minute. How many times have I been stuck? Well, I've dug myself out twice already this morning. I'm just not... I'm just not into it. But if I don't harden them down, then I've lost this area for the rest of the winter. And um, the best thing is just to take you and I can show you what I'm trying to do. There's a lot of trees that are still tagged, as I've mentioned before. These red and white tapes, these are my tags. There's a number throughout there. I have just managed to run through there. Right, which is very difficult so there's two there's one there and there's one on the other side but also there's a, a quite a few tagged that are diseased and dead so we're going to have a look at those there's quite a few diseased trees here it's worrying really i've said all this before but the tops start to die There's several tagged up here, but it's too difficult to walk around even with snowshoes, so we'll ride the scooter. I've tried to flatten out this morning because this is what I call my staging area. We'll pull all the logs and lay them down here in order to get them out. So, on the other side here, there's a small piece of forest there. That's where I have to get firewood for the kernel. So most of the land, all of the land that I'm stood on and I'm working, I have permission to cut on for construction lumber for the kernel and for firewood. But there's no firewood on this side of the valley, it's on the other side. And the reason this is such a nightmare is this was cut badly, I've got to say. I don't know, maybe seven, eight years ago. And there's huge stumps and big dips where the big machines went through and then right in the middle of that there's the same creek that runs through all the properties uh, getting across the creeks all right but getting across here i mean it's just a nightmare and i have put a i did attempt it it's very difficult to see everything's white you have to kind of go down there through the trees do a big circle and come back and you can see this here this was the result of my last attempt and i never even made it to the creek which is halfway across there and i had to do this big circle and come back because um the snow was too soft and too deep this is this is a great big lump of a thing if you had a, a more nimble two-stroke you could get a path in and this would follow but you've only got to lay one path in anyway there's no point me going on right you see there there's a tag that one's dead shouldn't be dead there's quite a few like that in there so that's due to come out but you can see even once i've been over it here half a dozen times i'm still going in so i'm i'm into snowshoes at the very best right let's attempt this one-handed should be fun So 
I've run this track down here because I've got this one tag to come out. That's a nice tree that is. I get a lot of lumber out of there and there's another one there. And these are been tagged for um, a new wall. Most of you will be familiar with the hot tub house and the, the barbecue area I built for the Colonel. Well, he wants to close in a wall because the wind is just whipping through there and close up the wall behind the hot tub. Well, I've selected six trees that have got to come out. But also there's dead ones in it, which I need to take down. So this area here, so the area, oh, that's interesting. So that some of you are familiar, the tops of the small trees you can see over there, they're all the ones I planted for my first wife. These ones up here, these were already established, but I've been thinning. This is where the Christmas tree comes from. I have to do a bit more thinning to give them a bit more room, but it's coming. It's definitely coming slowly. Another two trees that are tagged for lumber. Nice, good, healthy trees, reasonable girth. And by taking them out, I'm not really disturbing the integrity of what I'm trying to do here. There's another one right through there as well. But this area here seems to be much more healthy than the other side. I'll show you. <laughs> Firewood fire is an example of what I'm talking about. It's a great example of what I'm talking about. See the dead top on that? It's diseased. It's got to come down. And we've got a few like that on this side. This one here, this was a perfectly healthy tree two years ago, three years ago. This big pile here, you know I've got a thing about the forest and the termites and everything that needs to be here. Well there was a termite here, here and uh, two winters ago I dragged the logs through it and destroyed a quarter of it and put a loads of stuff back on it. Anyway, it's now twice the size it used to be. but. This one here, it's gone so quick. And now, of course, 
it's got bark beetle in it. So it's no use for anything. And this is, will be completely infested. See, uh, see all the holes. And uh, there's huge infestations of bark beetle, which they've tried to cure. What, what, what the problem's not the bark beetle. The problem is bad forest management and dead trees. So the bark beetle, there's too much sap, and the bark beetle don't like it to get into the, the bark of a good healthy tree. But the instant it shows a weakness, that's it, it's all over. In they go, and then they just kill it. And that's what's happened there. That's happened so quick. That's bark beetle killed that. It's got sick and shown some slight weakness somewhere and once they're in, that's it. But there's quite a few diseased trees. I wonder if we can just attempt to walk down here in this particular area. This is the one that worries me because this was such a beautiful tree. It was. And the ants, the termites here, this big thing, they keep the bark beetle at bay. So if a tree gets sick and it's got a big termite hill like it there, the ants will have the beetles. They've got no chance. Right, there's another one. Yeah, that's gone. There's a whole load in this area. There's some more, just a bit further down, which you have to come down, which you've got the dead tops. There's another one. That one. So there's a dozen big trees to come out of here. Well, no, there's not. There's seven big trees to come out of here that I need to cut up for lumber. And then uh, the colonel's going to want firewood. So really, we need to um, get across there. It don't look much and it don't look far, but I can't even tell you how difficult that is for me to get to on that machine. It is a nice day, as you can all tell. We're out of darkness and the sun is above the horizon. This is snow is ridiculous. And I'm at work. <laughs> wow. Oh, it's got to be time for coffee now. So what's in the trailer? Oh. What do I have to bring with me? Well, snowshoes. Both my saws, small bow saw, yeah, obviously, my sharpness, fuel, oil, snowshoes, most important thing, most important thing. So this is where you have to weigh everything up about cost. Perhaps it's um I don't appreciate how bright it is out here. So I've had to rerun these tracks in I've been at it. Just over two hours, so I haven't done anything yet. So just over two hours I've been running this machine with all this equipment with me, with me here, 
and um, I've got just about what you could call a staging area but it's too soft to be able to work on it and um, I'm nowhere near any of the trees that need to be cut. It's a big shame really because um, anyway we won't go into that, that's more politics, there's enough if you want to see something about politics there's a million channels out there all jumping on the bandwagon all just don't Simon. Right anyway well, let's have a cup of coffee way past due that is so up here this is where I've seen the bear twice I've seen it just at the bottom here coming out and then out here and it eats the berries just outside now I'm assuming the bears on the other side of the valley I didn't see it last year I went here much last year I went here much last year at all you won't see it now anyway it's hibernating but yeah there's a big male bear up there and then there's another story we were there's kind of a swampy area at the bottom here and um I was in there with my Sarah my youngest daughter and our friend picking cloudberries and um, I became aware, I became aware of a presence and then I saw the very distinguishing marks of a large bear and uh, yeah we quietly left through a side door save any embarrassment on either side anyway that was that was just there Normally, I should have run this many times by now. Anyway. So how deep is it? Well, that's quite a good question, really. How deep is it? Feet. Two and a half feet. Two and a half feet. So that's still, for here, this time of year, that is still a relatively low snowfall. The snowfall this year has been, normally you can't see any of this, it's just not there. So I've put my snowshoes on, what I was going to do is see if I can walk to the end of the trail I failed on the last time and see if I can snowshoe it to the where I need to go and that will usually be enough to get the snowmobile going. Anyway, I'm halfway across and I come across this. What is that? That is traipsed right the way across there. So, this is where it all got a bit impossible, and you can see I did this huge arc coming back, and I'm supposed to be going underneath that. See that? That's what my target was. But it all started to get a bit sideways here. It's just too deep and too soft. So, there's the creek. Crushed. Even with the snowshoes on, you kind of got to. I've done this before, it takes hours. I'm not sure it's worth it. I'm really not. That could take me 30 minutes just to get here. You can see what a mess it is out here, and this is their idea of clear cutting. So every mound you see. Is a stump and every dip you see is where the big machines just punch massive holes and I've got to get over to this I'm just not feeling it today I just uh, it's too much work for what what you can get out of it so what it really needs is it needs a, a machine down here to put in well to fill in the big holes and put out the stumps so that I'm able to make a track. Here's another one. 
Come on, it's up there. There's quite a few to take down here. I haven't got my sled with me because I was just coming up to lay down the tracks and uh, see where we are, really. I suppose I should keep my eyes peeled down, really, because there's obviously tracks going in one direction. And that's behind me. So, she's up there somewhere. And that's what's called here a teacher. These split trees. All right. They call them a teacher because teachers were female. That one's tagged there. You've got four smaller ones and the bigger one in the middle. It's not a particularly big one, but um, you can get some nice boards out of that. I've got to make a lot of tongue and groove for this particular job.
And what's the point of that? Well, you can see I've got one air's got to come down. I've got a trail running that way and that way. And I've got one there that's got to come down. And then here, I've got one here. So I've got a trail going up next to that and I've got one there. So now I've got a trail going around that. And I can fell those. And um, I can get close to the log sled and I haven't got to wade through all this and do myself an injury. So that's how I do it. Everybody does it differently. I've got one there that's got to come out. That's a bit too small for lumber, really. Anyway, I can run another track in down here if I want. And I've got a track running that way. And that's kind of how I have to open up the forest. But the, the snow's deep, but it's not too deep. The uh, For me, with this being so big and heavy, the idea is to get one. Once you've got one, don't stray too far from it and you can flip back onto the truck and, track and get yourself out of trouble. Right. I've pulled the sled up here because um, I was going to take down that large dead pine. But uh, this, I want to get across there, but the accident I'm going to have is going to be too big and I'm not prepared to take the risk. And just snowshoeing there means that I've now got an additional pain in my back. For those of you who don't know, it is my first anniversary, or it was uh, six days ago, of uh, herniating a disc, which then subsequently ruptured and I've had to have the whole thing removed. So um, I'm just not feeling it today. So I'm not gonna cut anything and I haven't got the sled anyway. And uh, it's been a particularly difficult week, hard week, because I've been cutting and splitting and stacking and storing so much wood from within the yard. Um, because this weekend there was supposed to be uh, severe temperatures and a snowstorm. And as you can see, it's blue sky and sunshine, so. So where we are, back in the yard. I can kind of show you where we're going. So you'll notice a big hole. This is what I've been working my way through this. For those of you who remember, there was a pole there. And it looked like a big pole, but it still didn't. It just just don't go very far you know if we look at the end of this it's not like you're cutting down oaks and maples and you can get endless amounts of firewood you can kind of see the small scale so whilst it creates a big pile it doesn't actually translate into a lot of wood so where are we well this is a scraggly old birch this is the size that we're after but they just don't come too much like this. I'll put a link to this video up here, or up there or somewhere. That was the one we took down next to the building that we've been looking at lumber for this morning, or at least trees to bring back and turn into lumber. You get quite a lot of volume out of the big ones, but it was just a, a one-off. So, where am I going? Right, we're filling up these crates here. And these crates are the small stuff there for the stoves, the small stoves. And then this crate here, this is kindling. So some of these tops, this is really scraggly. I like the nice straight ones because it goes through the soil. Some of these tops are waste, but um, a lot of them gets cut down like this. And then of course you use a handful like this in the furnace with a bit of uh, birch bark to get it going. So we've got quite a few of these crates now. There's six for Thomas stacked up over there. Um, and it's like I say, it's just, this is the typical size from the thinnings. It takes quite a lot to fill one like that. This is, this is quite good from the, from the big old tree, but this is what I've been fighting against. And um, we brought it all back in the tractor in the bucket and just piled it back in that corner over there. And this is what we're kind of digging through. So we take whatever we can that's good out of the tops. The small burnings obviously split the big stuff. Anyway, so I'm calling it there. Thanks for joining me. 
it's been a pleasure as always, but um, I've decided that uh, I'm just not feeling it today. I didn't feel it this morning. I very nearly didn't come, but I needed to make some content. So I've run in some tracks which needed doing, badly needed doing. I wish I had done more of them a few days ago, but like I say, I've been trying to get ahead of this storm that's coming, which is now not coming. Welcome to the Arctic. Wait 10 minutes and the weather will change. Thanks for joining me. Catch you on the next one. Bye for now.